All right, so uh, 2020 Midwest Weekender, we're gonna go through it and show you the engine. So I've got a little engine release latch here on the left-hand side. I'm gonna pop that for the hood. We're gonna raise up the hood. I've got a little hood prop on the left side. So we're gonna go left to right. There's a couple of uh, checks I wanna do here. I wanna make sure my engine coolant is full. That's a good line right there. That's a good level. Uh, this is actually called Mercedes Pink. If you were to add to this, that's the, the uh, formula you use. Uh, Mercedes Pink, you can get that at Mercedes. You can get it at any of your auto parts stores. We're also, in the newer units, we're running the diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, this could be checked uh, with a gauge up front on the dash. And this is also available at all your auto parts stores, your Walmarts, in the auto section. You also get this at truck stops when you're out on the road. So, uh, But there will be a gauge. This is used to uh, burn in the uh, exhaust to help clean up the atmosphere. And so that's what uh, it's mandatory that we have that. All right, so uh, there's no oil dipstick on this engine. Um, we can as actually check that on the dash as well. But we're running a, uh, oh, look up there, there's no sticker. Uh, we're running Mobile One in this, full synthetic. It's a, uh, it's a 030 weight that's in this. Cabin air filter, the air comes into here, goes through a cabin fil air filter on the passenger side. That's where it intakes the air. Uh, also got my brake fluid I want to check. I want to check my washer fluid reservoir right here. This is full. And there's no power steering. This has electronic power steering on it. And the oil filter would be here at the top. If someone did it themselves, that's where they would drop it in there. We also have a jump start for the chassis battery that starts the engine. So you would put the positive there. You would pan over here and you got the negative here on the frame. So that's how you hook up to do the uh, jump start for the battery if you ever needed to. So we're going to lower this back down. The maintenance on this is 20,000 miles or one year, whichever comes first. And we actually prefer you go to Mercedes for the first few times. That way they can hook up their scanner and they can scan for any kind of recall data, any kind of safety bulletins that might be on the unit. I've got a step here that gets me up to the windshield. I can scrape off ice, clean my windshield if needed. Be very careful, there's a camera in the front and we don't wanna knock that off or dislodge that. As part of our camera viewing system, we have a four point camera system in this one. Front, uh, left, right, and in the rear. And I've also got a place here that I can pop this cover out and put a tow hook in there and be able to tow this up on a flatbed or out of the snow, out of the mud, uh, if ever need be. Now the tow hook is located in the tool kit on the passenger side, but you just take a knife or a pen knife or a screwdriver and pop this cover off right here. And that'll gain you access to that little screw tab. Uh, we got fog lights on this unit. Uh, these mirrors here, uh, they do, uh, I'm gonna show you here inside, they're electric. So here's the electric controls here, left and right here. We have locks on the door here. I've got the lights here. Uh, these lights are in the auto position. You have automatic lights that come on. They also uh, dim on the highs if you're out on the highway and you get a car coming to you. Uh, when you see on the Midwest, you actually see there's a camera up in the windshield, mounted in the windshield. It looks down the road and it looks at several things for you. So it's looking at oncoming traffic. It's looking at the traffic ahead of you. It's, uh, it's looking at the, the speed signs and also the white lines on the road. So that allows us to uh, have all the safety features that are on board here with the sensors. So we have keep lane assist on this. Uh, we also have the driving assist on this, which when you're in cruise control and you're behind a line of traffic, it will maintain that distance from the car in front of you if that's activated. Also got my diesel fill here on this side. And then I've got, I uh, want to show you some fuses here. So I've got chassis fuses right here. These are on the Mercedes side. So you'll find, uh, you'll find that uh, these will be in your Mercedes manual. Let me flip that over, it's a buzzer, it's right there. Uh, there's some here. There's also some over on the passenger side in the floorboard. And I'll kind of show you, point that to, out to you. But all these are in the manual. All these are in the Mercedes manual and they're going to tell you uh, which light they go to, blinker, ho uh, horn, different things like that. 
Um, <clears throat> so the battery is actually located here. This is where the chassis battery is, is living. It's underneath this cover right here below the driver's footboard. So that's what we have. Your tire pressures on this particular unit is going to be 55 uh, or uh, 55 in the front and then 58 PSI on the duals in the back on the dual rims. So you can find that here at your door plate and uh, we'll move on. We're going to open this up. So one of the things you want to do when you first pull up to a campsite is you want to hook up your city water. So your city water hose is going to come in. It's actually going to connect right up here to this top connection. You don't want to hook it to the bottom one right here. These are flushes for the black and the gray. But you want to hook it up here. This is a city water connection. So you bring water into here. You want to use a pressure regulator back on the hose. And so that's going to regulate your pressure coming in so we don't have too much pressure on the lines throughout the coach. We also on city water, we want to have this valve that you see switch to city. If I go up to fresh water tank, I'm able to fill up the fresh water tank when I do this. So when I have city water coming into this connection, all I do is take this lever and turn it to the left and the water coming in is going to fill up the fresh water holding tank over here so we'll be able to pack fresh water with us. Now the drain for that fresh water is right up underneath here where I've got my hand. So there's just a plug so you can take that plug out and drain the water out when you need to or if you're winterizing something like that. Now we're going to hook up our sewer. So this is our outside shower here if we want to have hot and cold water. But on the outside, um, outside sewer connection, we're going to push the reel retract and that push the top of the button that, that will send the hose out. And then we can manually pull it out once the cluster releases in there, once the gear drive releases. And so this will go and down into your sewer. Now a lot of guys will take and they will adapt this down into the sewer connection. On most RV sites, it's going to use a three or four inch connection. So they make a, uh, you can get a little small piece of piping here, and then they make something called a, a donut that would go on there, and you slide that on there, and that will seal up in the sewer to keep any sewer gases from coming up. And so this would go down in the sewer. You could open that up just like that, and when it came time to dump, you're going to watch the gauges inside when the black tank's full. We're going to open up the black tank. And so I've opened that up. And so now I would turn on my macerator. This is a macerator system. So it's going to dry, uh, grind, chew, and pump everything through this little small hose. So potentially I could actually hook another hose up to this. And I could probably run it out 50 feet. But I could also go uphill at least 10 feet. So that's the advantages of the macerator system. So I'm going to turn on the macerator right here with the waste pump. And you'll see if I have anything out in there, it's going to be pumping that out, okay? Now, my tanks are fairly empty right now. I've got a little bit in there. But that's what it's going to do. It's going to be grinding that out and pumping it through the small hose. When it gets to an empty tank, this is kind of what you'll hear. You'll hear the pump going up and down. So we're pretty much done dumping the black tank. I would close that until the light goes off. And then I'll open my grate. And so I'm opening it up, do that for about five or six seconds. That's going to open the valve on that gray tank. And now the gray is flowing to the macerator, and I can do the same thing. And so any water that would be in the gray tank is going to also come out of this. And it's going to flush out my hose. So black first, and then the gray. But we always want to leave the valve shut when we're done. Another thing you can do is you also have flush connections for both the gray and the black. So here's what we do. So we hook up a hose here, garden hose. When you turn water on here, you always want one of these valves open that you're hooked up to, like the gray. You would open up the gray and you can flush that out for about 10 minutes or so. But you also want the waste pump turned on because that water is going into the waste, into the gray tank, and it's spraying the sides down, cleaning it down. And then you want somewhere for that water to come out. So never walk away from this when you're doing the uh, the flush on the black or the gray and always have your valve open and the macerator turned on just like you would be if you were dumping. So you don't want to forget and leave that running in. It's going to fill up your tank and it's got to go somewhere. It might come out the vents at the top or out of your toilet and that's a, that's a bad deal so we don't want that. 
So I'm on the fresh tank right now. So I filled up my tank. If you overfill this freshwater tank by adding water to it, it's going to flow out on the ground. So when we're done, let's just go back to city water position. And now if we wanted to run off of the tank, we just turn our pump on inside and that would give us pressure on all of these hot and cold lines here and inside the coach and uh, we'll have pressure. But uh, so don't forget, we're gonna shut these off too. And uh, I'm gonna put the cap back on the city water since we're not hooked up there. But you'll need to get a water hose with a regulator. And if you wanna adapt this down to a connection on the sewer, you might need a little small PVC adapter here that you can put on there and then be able to adapt what we call a, a ceiling donut on that. So that's, uh, you'll, you'll find that at all your RV centers uh, that you can buy those accessories if you need them. So we're gonna slide this in. We're gonna actually, and when you run this in, you wanna go left and right with this hose. Uh, we don't wanna kink the hose. We don't want it to bundle up in one position. And I kinda am running the water out of this as I do this now, but I'm gonna shut this off. I'm gonna run this in. You don't wanna go too far. And another thing you don't wanna do is pull this line all the way out and then run it in the opposite direction. That's gonna fold the line over and kink the line and then it'll, it'll be bad and you'll have to replace that line. So be very careful when you're running this out. Know which direction you're going and uh, the top is out and the bottom retracts, okay? And uh, this does not have a lock on it. This, this door and uh, that's okay. There's also a cable inlet. If I have cable TV, uh, I can just run my coaxial cable up to here. I can connect to that. Connect up to the park cable. Most of your parks will have free cable TV, so you can plug into that and get all your program you need from cable TV. So we're gonna put the door back up here. I pull loose now, and there we go. So we're gonna move on here. I've got a 30 amp cord hooked up to this for power. I'm gonna unplug it. You can say it's it's keyed, it only goes in one way, so you can only put it on the connector one way, push it and twist it to the right to lock it in, and then we're gonna put our locking collar on just like that. It's gonna seal it up. It's gonna keep anybody from moving the cord and it falling out, so it's gonna secure the, the uh, cord very well. If you look at the exhaust, this is the generator exhaust coming out of the coach. And this would be the exhaust for the S-Bar heater. So this is a diesel heater that runs off a of diesel on your main fuel tank. It's a miser, doesn't use very much diesel, but that's gonna heat the entire coach inside when it's, uh, when it's turned on. This is also another heater. This is the water heater. And this is a Suburban product. It actually runs off of uh, propane. And so I've got propane fuel over here. Let me show you where that's at it's on this side. So when you come over here and you want to run some of the uh, propane appliances, there's several things on the coach that run off of propane. We got our generator, uh, we got our water heater, and uh, so you'll need that turned on. So there is actually a toggle switch on the right. When you turn that on, you'll hear a nice click underneath the coach, and that's allowing propane to all the appliances. Now when you want to get this tank filled on here, you're going to look at your gauges inside, and when that tank gets gets down and gets low and you need some propane, you'll pull it into a filling station that offers propane, and they're going to fill it here, and they're going to vent it here. Okay, and so that's got an odor to it, and uh, kind of has a smell to it, just to uh, let you know if you had a leak on the propane side. There's also a quick disconnect here, and uh, we can hook up a a quick disconnect LP hose to this and be able to run a barbecue grill outside. So that's what you have here. And I've got the, the lever in the off position right now, but that would just snap into that fitting. And you can buy those also at your RV center and uh, run it out to your grill. So you can run a grill, you can run a, a, a fryer for some food, or you can run a propane heater outside in the winter. Uh, but that's where it's filled. Uh, that's gotta be filled by a certified, uh, someone that's certified in LP to be able to fill these tanks customer can't do it himself unless he's certified but you can fill it here and that's where they're going to vent it now there's an lp detector inside and if that lp detector is going off and sounding off uh, first thing you can do is come out here and turn off that switch that's going to turn off the flow of lp and that's a safe thing to do and then find the leak or have it serviced to find out what's going on with the leak 
but right now we do a leak uh, a leak test on all these LP appliances and uh, they are uh, I'm actually going to shut this off if this is going to go on the road but so traveling you you may not need this unless you're running your s bar heater inside i mean your uh, uh your water heater down the road so right now i'm just going to turn it off just for safety but you can also turn it off in storage for safety but if you needed your generator going down the road now the generator on this is located right here that's also uh an lp generator so you will need that switch on for the lp generator run if you're going to run it and uh I'm going to show you underneath here. I don't know if the camera can get under here, but I'm going to show you how to take the door off and we'll check our, we'll be able to check our, uh, check our oil level. It's kind of hard. You got to kind of want to get under here, take the door off. So I just turned the key there and I have a dipstick right over here on the left. So I could unscrew that, pop out the dipstick and be able to check the oil. I want to do that before my trip, before I run the generator. And I'm checking the oil level. It's in between the marks right there. So we got fresh oil in this now. And uh, when you get to uh, 20 hours on the hour meter inside, you need to do the first engine service on it. That, that would be the break-in period on this thing. So after the break-in, then you can go out a lot further, usually between 150 hours to 250 hours of service between the oil changes. And so, but that first one is critical because this is a new engine. We want to break it in properly and always run this with a good load on it, like the air condition, and that'll break in and seat the rings and get this thing uh, properly operated for the first 20 hours of its life. There's also a breaker in here. I kind of wanted to show you that. You can see the mark, it says circuit breaker. So if this circuit breaker on the generator trips, I won't have any power switched to the inside of the coach. So I would reach down here with my finger, just like that, and it's actually right here, and pull up on it, and that would reset the generator breaker, and then I'm back in business. Uh, so, you know, hopefully that never happens to you, but if you overload it, like say you turn on the air condition, and you possibly turn on the microwave and then it's charging hard for the batteries, it could possibly trip. So uh, just know where the breaker is and how to reset that. But there's a start and stop button here as well. This is the air cleaner. So you'll also change out the air cleaner when you change the oil or someone changes the oil for service. So we're gonna put the door back on here. I'm gonna put the top on. But up here. There we go. And then I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna turn the little lock, pull on it, it's good. So another thing I'm looking at underneath here, this has a pro air system on it for the air condition in the back, in the back of the coat. So driving down the road, it has a separate air condition for the house unit that can run off of the engine. So I don't really need to run the generator and then run my rooftop air because I have the pro air system, I can do that. But I could run all three if I wanted, the dash air, the rooftop, and the pro air if I needed to super cool everything and get it cooled down real fast. It's just the idea is you have a lot of options and that's great when you're in the hot weather. This is where your house battery is located underneath this big cover. So that's one big lead acid battery that's in there. I'm gonna start the generator when we go inside. So on these units, when you want to open the door, this is a powered door. You can just pull the handle. It's going to open it at any time. You can reach in and stop it if you need to. You can toggle it off of the switch or open it completely. This has a uh, screen door on it, so I can pull the screen door shut and have that working. Now, the way they've got this screen door set up, if the screen door were shut like it is now, and then somebody hit the switch or pulled the handle to get the door in, this door would come in and there's a, a, a stop block here that you see, it's made of rubber and it sticks inside the door. That would actually go inside this door. So we push that so there's no damage. And so that's just a relief for that. So it's nice to have the, the screen door, you keep out all the critters and creep all the bugs and stuff like that. So let's take a look inside. I've got my major, my main control up here, okay. And uh, 
you've got a battery switch here so you turn that on you get power on the display let me take this off for you so you can see and a couple of things we want to look at is number one I want to look and see the house power and the chassis power this is the house 14.4 I'm plugged into shore power now so it's powered up real well and we're charging the house battery in the back the chassis battery is also at 13.5 so um, that too is is over here the battery that starts the engine so we'll be able to look at the voltage on that if you ever get down to about 12 volts 11.8 uh, 11.9 on the house battery that's a pretty discharged battery so you need to plug in or you can run the generator to charge or you can start the engines because the alternator on the engine will charge both sets of batteries so but over here if I wanted to start the generator I could go unplug my shore power turn off my loads and then I could start the generator up here So this gives you the, the amount of run hours we have, and we only have 0.4 hours, so this is the hour meter you're going to be watching when you get to the 20 hours, do your first engine service on that. So that's how you crank up the generator. You can operate that going down the road or just park if you're dry camping or if you just are boondocking and you pulled over to a rest stop or whatever you're doing. So it's nice to have your own power supply, and, and you can be able to run the air condition, the microwave. Uh, uh, the range stop over here this in, this is an induction range stop so and the induction range stop takes uh, you have to have magnetic pots to be able to use that but uh, we're going to stop this and so now I'm back on shore power we're going to take a look at the tanks on this thing uh, I've got in the fresh water tank here I've got 67 percent uh, I've still got a little bit in the gray I need to go drain that out and macerate that out and drain that out you see the black is empty and the LP is full so I've already got a full LP tank on here ready to go and then when I want to turn on the water to have water pressure I'm just going to turn simply turn the pump on there and I'm running off the fresh water uh, tank right now and so now I have now I have water this pulls out and so if I wanted hot water if I want to heat up my water I have to turn on the water heater. The water heater is actually turned on right over here on this side. Let me turn some lights on in here. Down here. And so I just hit a master, a light master switch from this little control panel since I happen to be over here. You can do this on the main panel as well. But over here is my water heater. So this is the suburban water heater control. It's just like what you see right here. So that's off. I'm going to turn that on. Now I've got it set for 125. You may not need it that hot. And uh, by the time it gets to your faucet, it may not be. Uh, so I'm going to set for 120. And when we turn on the water here, the water heater is going to light up on LP. And uh, it's got to light up. It's got to go through the pipes. It's got to go through the lines. And then you'll start getting your hot water at your faucet. Um, as long as you have LP and as long as you have uh, water coming into the water heater, uh, you'll be able to take those long showers or whatever. But, but be aware that you have a certain amount of space in your tanks uh, that you have to, and that's already hot there. So that's going to make hot water as long as I have the faucet on, and that'll happen in the shower and in the sink inside of there. We're going to take a look at a couple more things here. I can actually raise this bed up and down here if I needed to. So you see the back sofa coming down. And there I'm able to make out the bed. I can actually take a partition that's inside of here and I can lift this up, put out my partition here. And then I can put my cushions on each side to fill up that space and I can make this one big sleeping area here, one big king bed. So that's kind of nice to have that and you have the option of, of doing a big bed or you can just sleep on the two side ones if you need to and still have room to hop off in the middle and go to the restroom at night and things like that. Uh, or just a bit move around. So my fresh water's got 33% in it. Uh, we also have tank heaters. Now what the tank heaters do in the winter time in the cold weather, you can turn that on. And there's heating pads on the bottom of those tanks, fresh, black, and gray. And at about 40 degrees, those will come on if I had the switch on here and that'll keep those thawed out, the black, gray, and the fresh. So that's how that works. I'm gonna raise my sofa back up. I like to check and make sure everything's out of the way, and I've done that already, but 
uh, that works. This is my awning. It's my awning here. Make sure nothing's in the way. lights on the awning that I can control from here. So when I go to lights here, I can turn on my awning lights. This particular awning has a motion sensor on it. So if the wind comes up and I've got my awning out deployed and ready to go, and the wind shakes it around, it's gonna run it in an emergency for us and, and do the job. However, you wanna err on the side of caution, you want to, uh, or you want to actually be proactive and bring it in at night when you go to bed, or don't leave it out if you leave your coach and you're not around it, okay? And these arms are gonna come in, they're gonna lift it up, and then it's gonna store it back in there. But I still got my porch light on, my awning light on, I'm gonna turn that off. And then I can turn, I've got a porch light back there, a LED porch light, that I can turn on and off. So the way this works on this master light switch here, any lights that I have turned on, like that rear accent light, that's what the master will turn off and on. Okay, so any light I had turned on previously, so you can sort of program it to have those things come on. And anytime you see an arrow on these, you can hold that and you can see I'm dimming this light right above my head. So that's the front lights. And so that's a dimmer. So you can hold it down, it goes back bright. So we have dimmable lights on this thing. We covered everything on this. This is showing the inside temperature here. I'm at 88. So if I want to turn on the rooftop air condition inside of here, I can go to the climate control section. And with the engine running, I can run the Pro Air and it has cool and heat on it. And that AC will come out of these vents when you have that turned on from here. Now you can also operate the Pro Air I believe from this front panel is over here while you drive. But uh, we can turn on the cool here. I'm gonna turn it on low so we can hear for volume. And then you can set your temperature right here. So I'm gonna crank that down. We're gonna go down to 72. And I'm at 88 now. And so I'm on low fan. Auto is like your house. It's gonna turn off the fan and the compressor when it meets that temperature. But in the case of having a low fan turned on in, in the cool mode, the cool, the compressor will cycle, but the fan will stay on low just to give you circulation. There's also uh, another way to do it here. You see, I've got it in auto down here for the, for the Pro Air. So the Pro Air has different fan speeds as well for that different air condition. So we'll run the Pro Air here in just a second, but we have to have the engine to do it. So that was the temperature. We're gonna go down to this little deal here. So think of this as another utility screen. And this coach has a satellite on it, also has an internet router available for you. You just have to get a SIM card, a micro SIM card from either uh, Verizon or AT&T internet provider, and uh, pop that in there, you can have mobile internet. So the way that you turn power on the router, uh, router you would just turn that on and you've got power. Then of course the inverter. So when you're dry camping and you don't have any shore power hooked up or no generator running, you can actually turn on the inverter and the inverter's gonna power up these TVs that you have on board in the front and the back. It's also gonna power up the, the range top, this induction range top. And it powers up the microwave, which is up here. So that microwave is a convection microwave, so you can operate it in any mode. It also has a grill on it, so we can grill inside of there and brown our foods if we need to. And so I'm looking at here, I've got my inver inverter switch just turned on. So that way when I do pull my short power, inverter's already on and the kids can watch TV or whoever's sitting back here and so as they drive. Now I can run these shades up and down. Um, you can see they're motorized shades. By hitting that button, I can also operate them back here. Um, you do not want to, uh, uh, and that was the driver's side rear, bringing that one up. Uh, you don't want to grab the shades and pull, pull on them because they are motorized, and so that you don't want to hurt the gears up inside of the shade and mess those up, so we got to be careful. Um, and I just hit Shade Master to cover that other shade there. 
Um, but you can also do the bed control here as well. And a lot of the functions that you can do on that big panel, like climate control and things like that, you can still do those uh, right here as well. Okay. And so there we go. And then we're gonna come over to that. And this is just a control setup. So what you can actually do on these panels, and these are called Firefly panels. Uh, made by spider controls but they you can actually go to control setup and if I want to add in any of these functions into my main screen I can do that so I can I can uh, I can put in the bed like that I can go to shades and add other shades so if I wanted to see this passenger side uh, middle shade here I'll do that and I say okay yes I want a passenger side middle right there I want to confirm that so now that we're back at the home screen, there it is, right there. And so I can use that. Well, I could hang on. see what they've got that on. I think it's a different shade. Uh, they've actually renamed it. Control setup. Shades. Passion, passion, passion. Front shade. <clears throat> Confirm that. There it is. I just had the wrong name put in. They don't actually have a clip so you can actually customize these screens to what you want to see and what you want to control on them by going to control setup using the utility uh, screen and there's some you can dim the screen and make it bright change some things temperature back to Fahrenheit and there we go so yeah but you can get some control here. You've also got one of these screens up on the driver's console. So I can actually control the lights. I can start the generator from up front. I can turn on the fog lights. Uh, there's a lot of things I can do up front while I'm driving so I don't have to come back and access these panels that you see. Okay. So we want to have refrigeration. So in order to turn on the refrigerator, you need to turn that switch on there, on the re refrigerator. And then down on the refrigerator itself, you just have a dial in here that you actually turn. That turns on the DC compressor. This is a 12 volt driven refrigerator. So these cool down really quick. Usually in a couple hours, it'll be cooled down and nice and frozen in there so that you can still use it. And so that's a good advantage on the compressor versus the uh, LP driven unit. But when you store this unit, you turn off power there, and that'll turn off the fridge so we don't run our batteries down in storage if need be. Okay, we're gonna go back to here. So I've got my shade control just like I had. Now this has satellite on top too. I wanna show you where the satellite receiver is actually located. We're gonna lift this up. I'll lift this panel up here. So this gives me access to all of my accessories that I have, a lot of the electronics that I need to use. I've got my direct TV receiver. Uh, I've got the track vision uh, satellite controller that's in here. This is an Apple TV unit that's in here. So you could have Apple TV if you have internet, uh, mobile internet. This is the Wi-Fi cradle point router that's located in here. You've also got a solar charge controller because we have solar panels on top of the roof and so anytime we're out in the sun the power is coming into this and being regulated to the batteries and so it's charging the batteries anytime we're in the sun but I wanted to show you where the direct TV receiver was um, you would have to get this authorized to be able to use the direct TV service but this is where it's located it has this cover that goes over the top and uh, I wanted to show you right here yeah, right up here, uh, there's actually, I don't know if you can see that, this is what we call a, a fuse module that's up here. So when we operate switches inside of here off the 
the uh, Firefly, it's activating some relays on here and that's how we turn on the lights and the shades and so this is the heart of that system right here that you see. But we have to have good battery power of course to run that. And uh, so I'm gonna put the cover back on it and uh, and I'm gonna show you how to turn on the television and to be able to get that satellite. There's also a place here for the breakers. Um, so we have all the breakers in here for the house. We have the microwave, the TVs, uh, anything powered up off of 120 volts and then we have a 30 amp main coming in right here from the shore power so this is all being protected so this is here for protection and so if you have one trip just come back and if that's trip just come back and push it back up to reset it just like in home the board back in here here we go um, this side. I want to show you this side. This is the side over here underneath the cover here that actually has the water pump location. And so here's the water pump down in here that you see. Okay, Let me get these screws out of the way. I have working on a project over here. So we got the pump over here, water pump over here. We also have a, a port that allows us to winterize this coach. So we could drain the water out of the freshwater tank outside, open up the outside faucet that being our low point, open all the faucets in here. Once the water is all drained out, then we could shut this valve off. We could open this valve, hook us our, a little small piece of hose up here to this fitting, run that down into a gallon of RV antifreeze, RV potable antifreeze, turn on the pump, and that would suck the antifreeze up through the system, and that would winterize the hot and cold lines that run through this coach. And that's how they recommend that you winterize this coach. But also you can go out and look at the videos of it and you can also um, look in your manual for that but we're going to shut this off now and i want to open this up this is water that comes from the water the fresh water tank and it comes into the pump so i want that open so i can use that water out of the fresh water tank so we're going to shut this back up here put that on there there we go okay so this this actually will reach in here and i'm going to release that lever if this is locked back on it that what allows the tv to fold out and articulate and move so we can set it up and have it positioned so we can watch and view our tv easily but it goes back and it locks back into place okay so i'm going to grab the remotes up here and we're going to show you how to operate this tv stuff because i get a lot of calls about this sometimes and just have to figure out which input is it is which one so the first thing i got two tv remotes Actually, the one in the back is a Samsung TV, and the one in the front is an LG. I don't know why they're mixing and matching, but that's what they're doing. So we're going to turn on that TV up front. I don't know what kind of reception I'm going to get here. So it'll be kind of interesting if I find out. I mean, I get, I get, I've got a metal cover here, so it's kind of hard. So I've got local TV up here playing right now. So that's my local digital TV. So we have. Um, we have a lot of stations in this area, so every time you go to a different area and you want to watch local digital TV, uh, you need to scan that area for the channels. And so like on the uh, Samsung, you would just go down through the menu here through the, with this menu button and go down to this little antenna and then I can go there and auto program and that will store the channels into, uh, into memory. The front TV and I go to HDMI, HDMI input. Now that's going to get me whatever input I select on the wall over here. So if I go to front TV and then I go to like say Apple TV here, um, that should pull up on the TV if the Apple TV is turned on, which I've got a remote here for her. So, so it says no signal detected. Let me go to uh, Blu-ray or I mean to uh, satellite right there. They weren't exposed to them, so I mean, they never really so, let me turn. Really on TV, and now that I get to tell it, I, I'm sure you just there it is. It's an infrared. So that gives me my satellite. Um, by turning on the receiver, I've got to turn it on with the remote. And then, if I wanted to go to Apple TV, I could just switch that to Apple TV. And of course, that's the menu screen for Apple TV. Um, I would just need to go to 
menu there, and I have to go through the setup on this as I'm doing it for Apple TV. Just take it to the rear too. So we're doing the same thing now. So if I go to the rear, now that's Apple TV. Then I go to satellite, um, push that, and that brings in the satellite. Okay, there it is, right there. So that's the direct TV. If I want to play a DVD, I've got to come over here and I've actually got to turn on power. So it has a radio over here too, the Fusion radio. And this is a radio, but it will also um, amplify. I believe it's, it might be the front TV hooked up to it. Just let it load up. So here we have the FM radio. All right. There's other options you could go to, too. Like if you're watching like local TV, and I believe this one's hooked up to it. Let's check and see. Let's put the front TV on uh, TV as well. That's it. So the front TV, actually, if you're watching that and you want to watch it over the speakers and have the sound, you can go to auxiliary number one on the input of this radio. And that's putting the uh, sound from the front TV over these speakers. So, so we're going to go back. And there's other options you can do on here. You can Bluetooth your music to it. Changes, you know, but we gotta keep going. We gotta keep going. I love it. Okay, so back to this. You can Bluetooth. You can do a bunch of different things. Uh, you can run an optical cable to it eventually, and and have like optical sound from this TV up to that as well. But the auxiliary one input is on the front from the front TV. So just keep that in mind. We can go back to radio here. And turn it off or mute it right there and then hold it down to turn it off. There we go. Okay, so remember Samsung TV in the back. We have an LG TV in the front. But you can see the reason they run the front TV through the speakers is because you don't have access to these speakers. This TV is mounted inside so there's no sound that you can hear. So they run it through that stereo system and that's how they get their sound. Okay. I want to show you this display right up here. We were talking about solar power earlier, and this little Victron uh, controller back there for the solar, this is your display panel. So anytime you see a plus amps on here, you're actually putting that into the batteries. So we're putting in 25 amps right now off of the shore power because we're plugged in. And I can just scroll down and look at some other parameters I'm using, and that's, a, that's 350 watts. Uh, this is the amount of amp hours that I have available, and then it's 100% charged. So the batteries, they saying the batteries are 100% charged, and we'll scroll back to here. So uh, this is the one that voltage that should match up with the voltage on this screen. You can see it 14.3, 14.39. So that's very close. But I like to look at this current reading here because when I'm not plugged in and if I'm getting solar power. If I'm getting enough to charge the batteries, I should see a positive number. But when I start seeing a negative number, it's pulling from the batteries. So I might be dry camping and this may be showing a negative 100 amps because I have the microwave on or something like that. But if you scroll down through this and you look at, there's a setting on here, uh, hours, and it'll show you, it'll give you roughly the amount of hours left in the batteries that you can run at that particular load. So it's a nice little panel to be able to see and see kind of what's happening with our batteries, what kind of capacity we have in them. And uh, that's a good little deal, okay? Let's see what else we got in here. So it's just all stored here on this side. Your manuals are here in the black bag. So this would be the manuals for all the equipment that's in here, the air condition, the owner's manual, those type of things. You also have the chassis manual. This is the Mercedes side of it right here. So that's in there. this little piece here. That's just a, uh, for when the monitors come in from the factory, they have a little shield that can be put around the monitor to shield you from the sun. So that's in here. If you wanted to use it, you can install that. 
But again, on the induction cooktop, you have to have a magnetic pot to use it. So if you have something at home that you can put a magnet to that you like to use and it does stick, then you can use it on the induction. And you would just simply turn on power right here, put your pot on there, and then set your temperature up over here on the left. You can do it by heat or you can do it by temperature. And you can also operate a timer so it's only running for a certain amount of time. Okay. But uh, peel the sticker up when you go to use it. And uh, you'll be in business. Turn that back off. Uh, let's see what else. We got USB chargers here on the left hand side. We got cup holders. Let me show you how to operate these windows here. So these windows actually slide out in the back. This is unique to a, to a Midwest. And uh, we're going to do that. When they slide, they open up a screen over the window automatically. So they're pretty cool windows. And that will release it right there off the shade. But uh, if you do that, it's magnetic. So it, it pulls tight there. And then I can roll it back like this. And then that will lock the window in place. So it's kind of a nice operation to be able to quickly open those up. This is a convection microwave grill. Oh, be careful. And up in there is your table pole. Okay, so we have a, a table that will come out and sit in here. By the way, on this pole, <laughs> it, it's keyed. It goes in also uh, into this little thing. You twist it to the right like that, and then you lock the collar down. So now we can take our tabletop. The tabletop is actually located right here, and this is where it lifts right here in this space and so we can take the tabletop out it's a nice material it's the same solid surface countertop and we can have the table come out and set up our dining area here so it's a quick setup got little cup holders on this and you can rotate that any direction you want so that comes up oh I didn't have it locked in place hang on I didn't have the collar down see there we go. But you want to just loosen up the collar and then twist it. And that's how you release that. So everything has a place on the unit this size. And we have uh, ventilation. We have a, a vent fan that's right above us. It's a motorized vent fan. So when I open that up, this thing is probably stuck here. There you go open up and I can control the speed and that's actually direction right now it's pulling air out of here so if I had hot air in the coach I would want to open that up and then I could open those windows in the back and it would suck that air that fresh air in and pull out the bad air or the, the hot air out of the coach right here uh, this is also on a rain sensor so this gets a rain that thing is going to shut for you so you don't have any rain coming in the coach and I can also set this up by temperature. So if you ever got any hotter than, hotter than what I have it set right there now, it's gonna come on and suck the heat out of here. So when you're leaving your coach or something, you're going into a restaurant, you can set and open that up so it won't get too hot in your coach and you can have that fan running. So, but it is controlled by the controller. And then I can turn it off. So it stores right here. So there's USB chargers here on this side and uh, there's a button here that I can control the door with. So I can open and close that door. So just be careful that you get out of the way. Uh, you can read the instructions here. There's an emergency exit switch here that you can open up the door in case the electric side ever quit working for you. So you can unlock the door here with a handle, push it out, and then open it up, okay? Um, so, all right, so let's talk about driving this for just a second. Um, the Mercedes, the new 2020, has a lot of safety features involved, and uh, we have the keyless ignition. So we're gonna start the engine up here, and when I look at these displays that are in front of me, uh, I'm going to turn on the radio over here just so I get some other stuff. Turn down the volume. I can also turn the volume down on the wheel if I need to. But um, I'm going to go to 
say I'm at navigation here, I can do that. So I'm activating the nav, the nav system. So on the, on the buttons over here, when I want to look at the def fluid level, I'm going to hit the home button and I'll hit it again. And then I scroll over with the little keypad here. So I can scroll over with my fingertips, get to service, and then I can go down and look at the def fluid. I'm sorry, go down and look at the def fluid. And it's full, you see the gauge there, it's displayed. Go back one step, go down to engine oil level. And that's filled up too, so I can check the engine oil and the def fluid from the display here. I don't have to go out to the hood and pull any kind of dipstick to do that. Now, we also have the assist plus and it just tells you when the service comes due as far as days on the engine. But you can also look down at the particle filter. The particle filter is part of the uh, emission system on this rig, and the particle system is uh, the particle. The diesel particle filter is actually cleaned as you drive, in most cases, uh, automatically. So we're going to go back to the driver assist, and this is where you can set it up if you're behind the line of cars or you're behind a car, and you can actually use this button up and down when you're in the line of cars that you can adjust the sensitivity of that or the distance of that you're behind the car you want to shorten that distance and then you can do that so we're going to go back to here here's another interesting thing anytime you say uh, hey mercedes how may i help you navigation so it will take you back through some voice commands so you can do some basic things through Mercedes, you can actually turn that off if that gets something you don't want to use right away or it's annoying or whatever, but you can go through the menu. You can go back up here. You can go to, uh, I'm sorry, assistance. And I quick access, go to assistance, and uh, you can actually attention assist. And you get, it's on standard, you could actually turn that off if that became a, an issue for you. But we're gonna go back to home. This is a scrolling screen or I could use this button here to scroll. So I'm scrolling right now through all of this. And I can go back to radio. This is Bluetooth. Uh, you can Bluetooth your phone to it. You just have to go up here and set that up uh, to phone and put your phone in Bluetooth mode and do a connect device and then connect new device. So it's gonna search your, this area for your new Bluetooth devices. You can pair those two together back over here back to radio but a lot of these buttons here pertain to the radio they call this the M Bux M B U X and so this will let me do a lot of features uh, from the wheel that I don't have to reach over and mess with the radio with my hands while I'm driving the idea is to keep your eyes facing forward the cruise controls over here on the left when you turn it on you'll see a small icon at the top right of the P on the screen and that's turned on and then I can set it I can reduce it, I can resume and cancel. So all of that can be done here. Now when you shift in gears on this particular rig, uh, I've got my foot on the brake and then when you go down to drive, you see it went down to drive. I can actually use my paddles here to manually go through the gear. So I'm in D4, five, six, now I'm back in drive. So I can manually paddle through the gears. I can step through the gears here. Uh, this wheel has a telescope and a tilt on it. So you can lock that where you need it to go, where it's comfortable for you. The wipers are over here on the stick. I can push in on those. You can see the nice coverage that we get on the, on the windshield now. So really love these wipers. Big, big improvement on them that we used to have. And then of course we got high beam, low beam. When you're over here, if you were in the manual position, you could just switch it to high beam and keep it there if you needed to. But in auto, it will flip the lights up and down as needed if you have a high high beams coming at you it will actually it will actually uh, adjust so another thing you can do on this you can answer the phone over here and you can adjust the volume when you do get a Bluetooth phone call um, you can also hit that button that's a prompt how may I help you and we also go down with it, and then we have these other adjustments that we can do. These are favorites that you might have put in place. And that's something interesting you can do with this radio. You can set up profiles. So each driver can have their own profile and their customized settings 
on this particular radio and control. So you can do that through the profile selection here. If you want to go to radio and you want to set it to XM, so you can go to XM radio, and this is the radio ID on it right now. So you'll have to subscribe to that. That's a user subscription type service. And then back to FM there. Uh, let's see what we have here. Back to home. This is interesting too. You can also see a lot more of the engine parameters. So as you drive, you can see the engine torque, you can see battery voltage, everything at a glance right here, instead of trying to find it on the gauges over here. You can actually see it through the big 10 inch screen that we have over here. Also some fuel consumption. And this is nice too, so that when you're sitting still, if you want to look up something in the owner's manual, you can do like this. But right now, see the vehicle's in motion. I'm gonna put it back in park. No, it's going to work. So you have to be in park. You have to. The unit has to be in park for you to actually use this option. They don't want you driving down the road trying to read the manual while you drive. So and so we can do some uh, quick lookups if we're looking for information on, like, say, oil or whatever. We can do a search, and we can say O I L, and there we go. All replacement amount. So we can look at that and just kind of scroll through it right here. See all the information that it says. Type of oil, how much they recommend for the engine. So it's just nice to have that quick reference for us to do that. There's some other apps you can do. You can hook up your smartphone through this device, through this radio, and then operate this as your browser if you have the internet service hooked up, okay? And then settings, you can go customize the, the coach like you need it. Like there's certain things you could turn on and off like blind spot assist. I recommend you leave that on for now. Uh, if you have it, if you have blind spot assist. This one has that so if a car comes up into the blind spot on your lane, it's gonna give you a warning in the mirrors. You're gonna get a red triangle and you might get a, uh, a vibration through the steering wheel as well as keep lane assist right here. So if you run off the lanes on the side of the road, it's gonna vibrate the steering wheel start applying the brake for you. So a lot of that's new in the 2020 that we have. We have a place up here for storage. We also have an induction charger for your phone. And then we have, we have the micro USB charge ports right here. They're the micro USB C I believe for that. And then uh, we have a 12 volt if you want to go old school and adapt to that right there. Okay, oh, sorry, somewhere we do. Look at that. Oh, up there. See, it's funny how they change that. Mm -hmm. It's down here. Sometimes they put them in some units and sometimes not. Here's the 12 volts right here. So if you want to use that, you can. In this coach, you do have a door open and shut, so I can push that. It's going to shut my sliding door for me, so I don't have to get up and down. And then I have my heated seat control over here on the on the right there. Just a lot of nice features. The, all the cup holders that you have. You have four key fobs, or uh, three key fobs. Yeah, four key fobs. These all open the the doors, and then you have the emergency key for the driver's door. If you had no power, you still needed to get in your coach. You could manually get into the lock on this side. The passenger side does not have that. You also have a slot here. Find it right here. That is a home slot for the fobs. In case the fob didn't work in your hand or in your pocket or stored up here, you could get it within proximity and it should read straight off of that. Not be a problem. But the cup holders up front here. And we also have our, um, our video, um, our cameras. You know, we had the front camera we said, and that's, uh, let's see, that's this one here on the front and then we have left and then right. And then when you hit the reverse over here, uh, like this, then you get the big camera here. And you can see you also get the adjustment lines, the guidance lines that you can use. So when you're turning, to guide you into the space that you need. There's just a large view there, so you have the options of different viewings on this. So it's pretty cool. There. This is just kind of a simulated bird's eye view whether or not you're straight on your lines with every movement. But this is electric steering, so 
as you drive, it's going to be real easy to turn when you're going slow in the parking lot. And as you speed up, it's going to firm up so that we have a nice positive uh, feel to the wheel when we drive. But uh, yeah, just a lot of nice options. Now this will not work going down the road. It'll only work at, when we're backing up or if we're at very low speeds in the parking lot. And then it's eventually going to turn off when we get up to highway speed or we get up some speed on the coach. These over here, if you look, if I want to park this rig, so that was drive there, that was reverse. If I, anytime I want to go to park, I can just press in on that and that'll take me back to park. And uh, also if you're in drive and you open the door, it's gonna automatically jump to park. So that's, uh, if you're driving slow and you're still at a, at a, uh, you're still moving, when you open that door, it's gonna throw it into park. So you're gonna feel that. So be aware of that and be careful where you're at. So, there you go. And then I could operate any of those here. Okay, so a little storage here at the top. We got storage up here. We got, uh, these are just dome lights that you have here in the center. Uh, we have a place for sunglasses. We also have a SOS help button right here. So if you have a problem, you're out on the road and you need some help from Mercedes, you can press that button, you get instant access to an operator, okay? And over here, the same too, here with uh, technical help, if you need some kind of service help or something, you can get that over here. Mercedes come around so you can walk around, lock them up there, turn that off. Okay, and before I forget, uh, we got vibration on the seats. So you have that on all four of these seats that you see right here. So with the key on, you'll be able to set that up. Make your ride a lot more comfortable so you can get a back massage or whatever you need just to help those muscles when you're doing a long trip. Put that in place. Okay, and just a couple of safety items I want to show you before you leave. Uh, you have a fire extinguisher right here by the door. So we got a fire extinguisher there. We have a smoke detector here in the back on the ceiling and then right here on the wall is an LPCO detector right now. If that's going off, remember always go outside and turn off your LP outside. So, okay, that's right. it. That's a, we're done. <laughs> that's it. <laughs>